Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to why are modern fighter jets slower than the 1960s and this title to me just sounds, I mean it, it fascinates me because I'm thinking like how can this be the case? You look at how quick they are now and then the idea that they could have been, well they were faster 60 years ago is mental. But yeah, we're going to check this out to see if that's actually the case because maybe it's just a bit of clickbait here and there. Or maybe it's because of the weight, the things they have to carry, or just, I don't know. It's it's interesting because that makes me realise maybe they were a lot more advanced in the 60s than I'm really thinking they were. Obviously, you know, it was, it was advanced for its time. But, like, yeah, I just wouldn't have thought there'd be even the comparison between the speeds and stuff. But we're going to check this out. Hopefully, going to enjoy. Links are in the description to my Patreon if you want to see some more of my reactions to movies, TV series. I've just reacted to Black Hawk Down the film and that was really something you know and yeah i'm thinking to do more military reactions or military movie reactions but yeah music reactions all that stuff whatever you want basically i can't post youtube links are there for the, for those who want to see it on the patreon but we're going to check this out and see how this is the case i don't really i don't know again i'm thinking it's going to be clickbait but maybe it's not this channel doesn't seem to click this channel seems to be like it's, it says what it's titled you know it's not just there to get you into the video and then it's just lying so we'll see what the case is here which can fly faster a vietnam war era f4 phantom or a 21st century f-35 lightning II? it's indeed the f4 phantom which has what the top speed of mach 2.2 compared to the f-35 lightning with a top speed of mach 1.6 it's a lot faster the phantom can go 450 miles per hour faster and this is not some exception Fighter jets have not gotten faster in the past 50 years, and in some cases, they have slowed down. Even this what? Bro, I'm so baffled. Counterintuitive on the surface, but it all makes sense if you're high, like a pilot, but it's not what you think. <laughs> Military aircraft were first used in World War I for reconnaissance and observation, but almost immediately, enemy pilots began to attack each other with handguns and grenades. Not surprisingly, the advantages attack each other. Look at that! He's just literally holding the the bomb with handguns and grenades. I mean, that is just crazy. Where is the safety here? Not surprisingly, the advantages implicit in having high top speeds were quite clear. The faster aircraft could always attack or disengage from the slower one. The maximum speed of early World War One aircraft averaged at approximately 110 miles per hour. And by the end of the war, their speeds were up to 140 miles per hour. More than doubled. Oh no, not Just doubled. So you can I thought it doubled for a second, no. Appreciate what a significant factor aircraft speed was back in those days. When the British came out with the de Havilland Mosquito Bomber in 1940, the Royal Air Force didn't even put guns on the aircraft because it could cruise at such a high speed that was essentially immune against all of Luftwaffe's fighters. But it was during the Korean War where jet aircraft were employed extensively for the first time. The maximum speeds of the CT-133 and MiG-15 were near Mach 0.9. Their best cruise speeds were also near Mach 0.9, and quite frequently, these aircraft flew at their maximum speeds. The desire for speed continued after the Korean War. Around the same time, jet engines with operational afterburners became available and the supersonic F-100 led in the era of century C What's going on here? became available and the supersonic F-100 led in the era of century series fighters. The name century series stems from these fighters designation numbers which started at 100. The Europeans and Russians also developed supersonic aircraft of their own like the Super Mister B-2 Mirage 3, Lightning P1, and MiG-19 and MiG-21. But these supersonic fighters had a totally new characteristic which had not been encountered previously. The subsonic fighters had a maximum speed that was very close to their best cruise speed. But supersonic aircraft had a maximum speed that was 50 to 100% greater than their best cruise speed because of afterburners. So hitting Mach 2 almost became a requirement. The Mach 2.8 speed of MiG-25 became the reason for justifying the need for a new fighter to the US Congress in 1968 to 1970. 
But this is where intuition meets reality. Where they may be going too quick to a point where it just wasn't really actually any more beneficial. And then <clears throat> instead of beneficial, it was actually affecting them in ways. I mean, I don't know how, because obviously I'm thinking the quicker you are, just the better. But I guess there are some things that are negative about that, that maybe will be mentioned. But The Vietnam War went on for 20 years. During that conflict, both the US Air Force and Navy used various models of the F-4 Phantom while the other side flew the MiG-21s, both of which had maximum speeds of Mach 2.2. But here's where things get interesting. Military analysts reviewed the flight data of more than 100,000 sorties flown by the Mach 2.2 American fighter bombers over North Vietnam. How many hours of flight combat time do you think was recorded at Mach 2.2, or Mach 2, or even Mach 1.8? The answer is zero. <laughs> Not even one second of combat was flown at those speeds. Oh. A few minutes were flown at Mach 1.4, and remarkably few hours were flown at or above Mach 1.2. Wait, so I'm just guessing maybe that it was sort of the idea of they're spending all this money to make them go this fast but then they're never actually used at those speeds. Okay, that makes a lot more sense, to be fair. Now I hear that, I see, I can see probably where this is heading now. Remember, this is out of over 100,000 sorties over 20 years. So what was going on in combat that caused top speeds to remain completely unutilized? Turn rate is a vital parameter when comparing air-to-air -air combat capabilities of different aircraft. The higher the turn rate, mm. the more quickly an aircraft can change its heading. And being more maneuverable is desirable when you're chasing or are being chased. Because of this, pilots typically flew their aircraft at a speed that allowed for maximum turn rate. But maximizing the turn rate will inevitably drive down the speed to about Mach 0.7. Until an aircraft can be designed with its turn rate maximized in the supersonic range, Air-to-air -air combat will occur at subsonic speeds. Is that a possibility where they can eventually engineer it to a point where they can turn at the same speed that they're already flying at? That would be crazy. Now you might be thinking, having a top speed of Mach 2.2 at least allows the aircraft to get to the combat zone quicker. Yeah, that's what and I'm And then thinking. it can slow down to engage. Now that's true, but not so fast. The maximum distance an airplane can travel from its base to accomplish an objective and return is known as combat radius or combat range. Even when flying into the combat zone, supersonic speed is rarely advantageous. That's because flying supersonic consumes a lot of fuel. Mm. Northrop studied a multitude of intercept cases and found that speeds above Mach 1.1 were almost never helpful because they severely reduced the combat range. For example, for an F-4 Phantom II, increasing the runout speed from subsonic to Mach 1.5 reduces its combat range by a whopping 70%. But aside from turn rate and combat radius, both of which discourage supersonic flights, there are other factors that diminish the significance of supersonic capability. During World War I and World War II, one of the advantages of high top speeds was escaping enemy fire. But introduction of modern air-to-air -air and surface-to-air guided missiles changed all that. For example, the American AIM-120 air-to-air missile, which entered service in 1991, has a top speed of Mach 4. And some variations of the Russian S-300 missile have a top speed of Mach 7, more than twice as fast as the aircraft that is designed to shoot down. You can run, but you can't hide, doesn't apply here. In fact, the very opposite is true. As it became clear that combat aircraft are not going to be able to defeat an air defense system simply by the virtue of speed, the strategy changed. You what can't run. Hell? By the virtue of speed, the strategy, what the fuck? strategy changed. You can't run, but you can hide. How about not getting detected in the first place? This emphasis on stealth further reduced the importance of speed. That's because supersonic speeds go hand in hand with increased heat signature of the aircraft. Oh. The use of I would have just thought the quicker you are, the harder you are to, to detect. But I guess the heat 
like he's making now <clears throat> is what makes it easier but I don't know I just assumed the quicker you are the further the qu- the easier it will be to just avoid any detection whatsoever but yeah afterburners as well as the aircraft body heating up due to increased air resistance at supersonic speeds make it easier for infrared sensors to detect the aircraft this is why the maximum sustained speed of the F-22 Raptor was actually reduced from Mach 1.8 to Mach 1.6 to reduce the heat load on the leading edge of the composite wing, <coughs> thus improving stealth. The original utility of military aircraft was reconnaissance, flying over, taking pictures and returning to base. What is that? Wait, what am I looking at? Is that a blimp? What are blimps used for now? Compared to those days, the imagery technology of- Wait, is this inside? Now I just want to see. Just for my own interest. Are blimps still used? See, things like blimps and hovercrafts are just things that I just don't see as real. <laughs> like, they're these sort of- like, What's it like inside a blimp? What? Oh. That's not inside a blimp. But like, uh, I don't know, man. It, it's fascinating to me. I don't really know what I'm trying to look at, but. Oh, because obviously you're not going to be in the balloon. It's just going to be in this bit where you can really do anything, right? I, I was sort of thinking you can do stuff in the balloon bit, but obviously not. I don't think. I really don't know, to be honest. I actually have no idea. Such a weird creation. Such a weird creation. Um, which one am I at? Oh, this one. Available today is far superior, but requires more space than what can fit inside an SR-71 fuselage. The technological advancements in satellite and UAVs have proven more effective for imagery reconnaissance, which are alternatives to supersonic reconnaissance aircraft. Designing an aircraft that can handle supersonic speeds adds significant design complexities that need to be addressed. The higher the top speed, the more complicated things get. The need for complex air intakes to slow down the airflow to subsonic speeds adds weight. The need for high-powered, low-bypass engines usually means lower fuel efficiency. But these imposed changes that enable those top speeds negatively impact aircraft performance in high subsonic speeds. And going back to that study of the 100,000 sorties during the Vietnam War, the subsonic range is where these aircraft are mostly operating in. An aircraft like the F-35 has a top speed of Mach 1.6, but it can carry more missiles, is stealth, and has a bigger combat range, yeah. compared to a fighter like F-104, which had a top speed of over Mach 2, but suffered from a smaller combat range and could carry less armament. The new fighters are designed for marathons and not sprints. Yeah, I mean, it's, they're obviously a lot better, but it is just, like, going into this, I was thinking, surely that's not the case, but now it's explained, I can see why, because it's probably it's better in every situation. And like he said, the max speeds were never used in combat situations. So it's just like, yeah, what's the point in this? You're engineering it to be this quick for what? And yeah, so it's interesting to see it, but you just look at them and I just assume this has got to be five times quicker. But just say they did now just make the fastest possible jet how quick do you reckon they could possibly get it to, get it to go it's i'm not saying a jet like a military jet but maybe not focused on carrying that many missiles and stuff i don't know but how quick do you reckon they could get them to go i mean i guess there are jets that are made i can probably just search it up the fastest fastest jet in the world oh can't type as per usual. Oh, so the Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird Mac 3.3. Fair enough. So they do still make them quick, but I guess it's for different sort of roles and stuff. Plus, is this not? No, I don't know. I was gonna say, is it not considered the jet? But it literally says it there. But 
yeah it's interesting i like i like these sort of topics to learn about why things are the way they are and all that but today's fighters can usually hold a higher speed about afterburners and therefore hold a high average speed when traveling towards whatever goal obviously they're better that's, that's clear but i saw what's mentioned um what's the, i saw someone mention what's that film the flight film what's it called with tom cruise Top Gun, is it called Top Gun? Because I've never watched it, and and it was a really big film, right? So maybe I could do a reaction to this on my Patreon. I'm thinking that I could because this is the sort of film that I feel like I could do that to. I don't really know what it's about. I just know it's about flying and stuff. But I don't know if you'd want that. Obviously, let me know. But yeah, anyway, I'm just talking random stuff now but i hopefully enjoy this reaction and yeah until next time like subscribe and peace